After examining the specific heats, we can clearly see the high value for water. The specific heat of water is indeed one of the highest amounts. It takes a whole lot of energy to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So the rather high specific heat of water allows water to absorb a lot of heat energy without a large increase in its temperature. The large amount of water absorbing heat from the air keeps beaches cool in the summer. It also helps to act as a coolant because it can absorb a lot of heat and remove it from important mechanical parts and help them from overheating or even melting or transferring the heat to something else because it's in a fluid. Quantifying heat energy, and this is a practice calculation. It should look somewhat familiar to us from last quarter. MC delta T, where M stands for the mass, C is the specific heat constant, and the change in temperature is the delta T. Recall that this little triangle stands for the change in temperature. Heat capacity of an object is directly proportional to its mass and the specific heat constant for that material. And we simply calcula calculate heat measured in joules, set equal to mass, which is in a gram. Specific heat is a joule per gram degrees Celsius and that change in temperature will come out in a degree Celsius. Joules is heat. Notice that Q is given to the representation of heat energy. Mass is measured in a gram. Specific heat is measured in a joule per gram degree Celsius. And change in temperature will be a degree Celsius unit. Let's take a peek at an example problem. How much heat is absorbed by a copper penny with a mass of 31 grams whose temperature rises from negative 8 degrees Celsius all the way to 37 degrees Celsius. We understand when we're calculating heat energy, that's Q. Q is heat. We need to know the mass times the specific heat constant times the change in temperature. We need that slide that gave us all of the different values of specific heat to help us solve this problem. So if you're doing like I am right now, I'm going through the previous slides, pulling out that chart of all the specific heat constants given to us. Let's see if I can find it. Slide number 13 gives us that, or perhaps you could look it up in your textbook using table 6.4. Copper has a unique specific heat value it is a constant, 0.385 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So we needed that value, 0.385. And that's in a joule per gram degree Celsius, the specific heat constant for copper. Well, let's begin. We're calculating Q. Q is standing for heat energy measured in joules. The mass given to us is already in a gram unit. 3.10 times the constant we looked up in our chart, 0.385 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature, thinking of the number line, if it started at negative 8 and climbed all the way to 37, we are actually adding those, that's a total change of 45 degrees Celsius. Again, on the number line, we're 0 we start at negative 8, we have to climb 8 units just to reach the 0, and 37 more to get to 37 degrees. The total change in temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. And now let's just hit that on our calculator. 3.1 grams times 0.385 joules per gram Celsius times 45 degrees, and our answer is showing us 53 0.7 joules of energy. Being absorbed lets us know that it's absorbing with a positive sign. The system is taking in 53.7 joules of energy. So our strategy to calculate heat, we multiplied mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. Mc delta T. Our next problem employs the same practice. We're going to calculate the amount of heat released, exothermic process, releasing heat, 
when four point, excuse me, 7.4 grams of water cools from 49 to 29 degrees Celsius. They gave us a specific heat for water, but we could also find that in our specific heat constant table, 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. Calculate the heat release, so that's solving for Q. The mass given, 7.40 grams. The specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature, the difference between 49 and 29 is 20 degrees. Knowing that this is an exothermic process, heat releasing, we know that Q is going to come out to be a negative value, releasing heat from the system to the surroundings. Let's hit and see what our calculator finds. 7.4 times 4.18 times 20. Mass times specific heat times our change in temperature, and we find 618.64 joules of energy being released from this system. M times C times delta T. Suppose heat transfer and final temperature is the topic. When two objects at different temperatures are placed into contact, since heat is an energy, it actually flows from the material that's hot to the material that's cold. Heat flows until they've reached the same final temperature. <laughs> 